that brings us neatly on to um, the next um, issue for discussion, which is looking at specific technologies and how they're being used by legal services providers and what difference they're making. And I think probably the first one we should mention is um, artificial intelligence, which is obviously um, creating a big, big noise in the legal services market. What do we mean by that? And um, how, how is artificial intelligence being used by law firms to deliver a better service, perhaps? I, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a cynic because AI has suddenly become the go faster stripe. That everything has got AI in it, and in fact, it's machine learning, and it's OCR, it's technology that's 20 years plus old, and it's. To go back to the point I made earlier, the difference now is firms are realizing they're under more competitive pressure and they are prepared to invest in these technologies, whereas previously it was actually cheaper to have a lot of uh, trainees sift the documents. And I think that's the one of the big changes we're seeing, that at long last the technologies out there are being embraced and invested in and exploited. I think completely agree. That's a really good point. I think there's been a, a marked improvement in, uh, in some of the technology though since 2014. And when, I think when we talk about AI, just to answer your first question, actually that's more really, really clever search. Mm. And there's a branch that's talking about you know, searching through documents and making decisions based on them in the courts and are you going to get robot judges that are sort of so far away that you can almost mm. just discount that. But if you just look at the core activity of reading and extracting data from documents, mm. reporting that, to a more experienced lawyer, um, that is really, you know, that's a heavily augmented search. And there's an element of intelligence in there where the engine learns from previous searches, you know, what's, what's good, what isn't, what data you wanna get from a document, what you don't, whether the data you get is, is good or not, is what you're looking for. So there's an element of learning in there that you can argue is, is right at the lower end of artificial intelligence. Could you give us an example of that, of how that's been, how that is used currently in law firms? So it's used patchily. I mean, it's only two, so 2014 was two years ago, mm. right? So, and it takes a long time, as we were saying before, for a law mm. firm to, uh, to embrace new technology, work out how to implement it, mm. and then you know, start to get value from that. Um, but I built a, a robot to read through basic legal documents, extract key data points, put them into a spreadsheet, do cross checks with external databases, um, you know, deduplicate things, you know, basically do a lot of processing to that. And it would do two weeks work in two seconds. Mm -hmm. But two weeks of the worst sort of work that you just yeah. would not want to yeah. do, right? It's the dog end of legal work, the stuff yeah. that you get the machines you see, to do. You've seen that in a discovery systems as well that are being used for that when you're going through millions of yeah potentially millions yeah. of pa pages of paper in you know um outlook files and things just to sift through and sort yeah. these are the key emails and these are the bits you want and these are merely just the duplicates which is the all. essence of you know, the technology solving a problem that was created by the technology that helped you to create so many documents that yes. now you, there are too many for you to physically yes. read through yes. it's almost the same as there is so much law being written and so much regulation being written there's yes. too much for you to read through so you need a technology yes. solution for that as well mm. but the ai mm. stuff actually there is genuine ai technology out there in the market that can make huge improvements to wor the working life of junior lawyers as well as to the time and the money that, it, mm. that you have to spend to, um, to do the, the actual document review. Um, and if you can target it at specific areas of work and deliver huge productivity improvements, I mean, you don't have to ask people to stay through the weekend mm. anymore. Or I think that's, that's, that's going to say it's partly being driven though by the clients who are saying, look, this technology out here that can do it. Mm -hmm. Why have we got this enormous bill? Because you've mm. had a basement full of law students and trainees sifting through the paperwork. I think that's the evolution of AI. I think AI is, is the, the, the whole problem with AI is the word AI. And yes. it's moved on now from the futurists talking about it and talking about it in the sense that here's a picture of a robot and this is what a lawyer's going to be. And that's selling the fear, which has been a really bad way to sell AI into law firms, to now uh, it practically being used in a positive way and we focus more on future and benefits. And it's here now, it's live, and it makes lawyers' lives better. Yeah. And that's, that's mm -hmm. the key difference, and that's where we are now at the point, and it is easy to sell, but it is a selling in as a technologist into a law firm, you're looking at a six to 12 month sales cycle. It's because it's so hard to sell into law firms, it's why technology costs so much, and because there are so many legacy systems to integrate in with, it's very, very difficult. I mean, new entrants maybe have a flatter approach or a blanker sheet of paper to mm -hmm. 
to approach that, and that's maybe why you can capitalise on these things better. But when you're looking at the landscape, it's very difficult to actually sell in. And why is that? Is that because lawyers think that what they do is inherently unique and, and can't be systematised? Or is it more about, as you said, practical issues such as integration with other systems? Or yeah, I think there's a, a strong culture that we've touched on already of, of resistance to change. Mm -hmm. um, the, move, the people are still dictating to secretaries and being mm -hmm. right up. So it's almost like gone from a paper world to a digital world with a massive handhold mm -hmm. that still exists. Now is the time where it's changing and it will be interesting for students going forward um, to enter the market at this stage. I do genuinely think the landscape is going to change a lot in the next five years. And it's going to be particularly in the UK where we have ABS and um, these rules coming th through. Law firms have traditionally been very resistant to spending money on technology. They tend to regard it as a back office overhead and because many of them have spent huge amounts of money on endlessly replacing word processing systems, endlessly replacing practice management accounting systems. And so it's, it's only relatively recently that the technologies are starting to impact on the lawyering, the bit that the lawyers do as opposed to the back office administration. And I think that's a bit of a culture change that it's technology. And I think the element of disruption is some firms are getting this and are investing in them, others are resistant. And I think it was a marketing play for a while to use to, to speak to clients about AI, but now it's actually coming through and being used, yeah. mm. but it's taking a while. Mm. So we've talked about um, the AI or, or machine learning really, um, technology assisted review, we've mentioned e-discovery, the ability of these systems to scan hundreds of thousands, mm. even millions of documents and to be able to, to perhaps highlight those that present mm. a, a risk so that the lawyer can then um, uh, make a more informed um, uh, decision or, or provide more informed inv advice. Um, but we've talked really about how we're, we're saving the junior lawyer's time and therefore providing a cheaper bill for the client at the end. But what about a better service for the client? What about um, technology that's enabling law firms to really embed their knowledge of that client and their knowledge of previous transactions or previous litigation and then leveraging that to provide a better service. Is there anything we can say about that the, kind the of technology? The same technology can be applied to do exactly that, to learn from previously negotiated mm -hmm. contracts for a particular client, what their preferred position is and mm -hmm. what the preferred posi position of the people they've negotiated against is so that you can shortcut negotiation process to say, well, actually, we know that this client has, has accepted this term mm. 20 times in the last two years, so why are we negotiating it with you now? We, there's just no point. I mean, a lot of law firm client relationships are based on the fact that you've done their business for 20 years, so mm -hmm. you know what they want, and you know their business better than they know it themselves. Yeah. So huge stickiness for clients. Um, so there's definitely those sorts of applications. Yeah. For the AI-based stuff, I mean, there's lots of other technology you could talk about that's used in other sectors that um, that would help to improve you know, client service and delivery um, tracking. Parcel, so parcel tracking, something I was talking about the other day. If, if you could have a parcel tracking, but for a matter, mm. so you could log on and see where your legal matter was with a law firm and who was working on what. And, they, exist. they exist. But, but they're, they're, they're case not, management portals. Yeah, that's, but, that's but they're the not ubiquitous in the market. In the, certainly in our end of the market. In the, not in the, that at the big end of the market, but yeah. the volume end that they they've been. The order of the day for mm. and I decades, the, the big space. factories. You know, the, the, the space the, I described that we're in, in the law tech space, is a bit of an Ask Jeeves phase. So there, these technologies yeah. exist. Like Ask Jeeves explained to people what a search engine was in a really nice way. Google came along and did a better search engine. Mm. And I think that those things exist, mm. but by their nature, they're not succeeded yet because not everyone's using them. Yeah. So there's a big opportunity there. And a lot of the challenges we have as technologists is selling at the moment that cultural difference to explain to people actually we talk about email earlier but really in the tech space we don't use email we use slack we use live chat and students coming through will be more familiar with whatsapp probably or snapchat than they will with email and the younger generation for getting law students are not using email using email to register on things but that's it and that's going to come through to clients and you see these technologies like whatsapp for business coming through facebook chat for business and that stuff is going to come and affect the legal profession for sure